Uh, there really isn't many decent Winston players, I believe. Uh, because Winston is such a easy hero to die on. A lot of players actually they think that Winston is supposed to dive the back line. They have the misimpression that Winston should dive back line, and they just dive like super deep into right into the middle of the enemy team. Use their bubble, and they find that they die within two to three seconds because all six of the enemy team can just turn their attention to the Winston and focus him down. In this video, I'll be talking about generally how to use Winston to take space. Uh, in this case, we'll be playing on a cough map. So this is one of my ranked games in the goal rank. So it's not a very high ranked game, but generally I want to use this to illustrate uh, how a player should play Winston generally at maybe plat, go even plat, or maybe go and lower SR. Go SR or even lower. Okay. So in this, yep, so I'll be playing as the Winston here. And we're playing on this map, Ilios. So this is Ilios Well. Would this map be a good map for dive? Uh, I'm not too sure, but I think it's pretty decent. Generally, cough maps or maps which are like you need a lot of mobility to travel around. Um, what would be good maps? Generally, maps with a lot of high ground are generally good dive maps. They're good maps to play Winston because uh, as Winston, you have easy access to high ground like platforms and so, so on. So you can drive like enemy DPSs off the high ground, um, such as Widowmakers, Ash or Soldiers off the high ground, even McCree as well. Or you can drive off uh, like uh, enemy support such as uh, Annas or Baptiste off the high ground as well. So, um, so generally, yeah, maps with high ground. So sometimes certain cough maps dive is uh, pretty strong, pretty useful as well, mainly because if the map is very exposed uh, and you do not want to play a death ball like Ryan, like you get shot from many angles by double shield comps, then you might be maps that you want to consider playing die for. So in this case, I chose to play uh, Winston here on this particular, um, we call this uh, yeah, Elios with a well in the middle. So you can see a lot of people usually play Orisa Roadhog because you can use Hawk uh, the pool as well as Hawk's hook to hook people into the well as an instant kill. Okay, first and foremost, um, you will see that as Winston, your main priority is same as a Reinhardt, so it's same as a main tank. You want to take space, win space for your team, create the space so that your DPSs can have more freedom to frag out, and your supports have more room to operate, and they can survive longer, uh, get more healing done, and have a bigger impact in the game. So first and foremost is, how does a Winston win space? Generally, Winston is a very offensive hero. If you look at his kit, so you can, uh, I, I like this website a lot, which is overwatch.gamepedia.com. And if you look at Winston's kit, generally his damage isn't a lot, but because of his strong mobility, like jump pack, uh, jump pack also doesn't land a lot of damage, but the cooldown is about six seconds, which is pretty quick. And projector barrier is only 700 health, so it's pretty low. And he has a primal rage that can give him uh, pretty much a lot of jump. I think his jump cooldown is like 3 seconds for every jump. Yep, and he gives him 1000 armor. Damage is also pretty low as well. But even though Winston damage is low, because his priority as a, as a, as a tank, um, we would still like to use him offensively to take space. So let's say if we want to take space offensively here, where would you where would we like to land with our first jump pack? So let's look at so maybe I, let's say we want to land uh at space okay let's put it option A. If you want to land at option B do you want to land at option C or option D? Let's say these are the areas that we can access with our first jump pack. A, B, C or D. So you can pause the video, give yourself about like 30 seconds to consider the pros and cons of each or maybe one minute or two. And uh, then, uh, yeah. So generally what I would choose, okay, let's, uh, so if A, B, C, and D here, right? What I would generally choose is, okay, have the cursor back. Oh, okay, it moves around my screen. What I would generally choose is either 
B, C, or D. But in this particular map, you see me later, I choose C. Actually, D is not too bad as well. Let's clear up the options. Okay. So why do I, why would I choose, why do I not choose A? You will see, actually, maybe a few instances would, Winston's would want to dive in A because you want to do maximum damage to the back line, correct? The problem is that if the enemy team is gathered up at 6, if you dive in very deeply, uh, your projected barrier only lasts 700 hit points and your own health is only 600 hit points, even though it's more than 1,000, it still doesn't last really long. Plus the fact that if your enemies walk inside your projected barrier, they can do damage to you without the shield getting in the way. So uh, damage heroes like Reaper or Roadhog, if they get inside your barrier, they can shotgun you. Uh, Torbjorn has a shotgun as well. They can shotgun the Winston to death pretty quickly. So you never want to dive into an enemy team when they're fully gathered at 6. So in this case, uh, since we can't dive directly into the enemy team, there are a few options that we have. We can have, uh, this is a good option. That means you can dive here and you get some natural cover from this small pillar here. The problem is that if you look at, uh, if you turn around to the back view, if your team is running an Anna like my team currently is, the Anna can't heal me because the Anna would probably like to be stationed here. So she does not have line of sight to heal me there. So that is uh, something that I do not think is ideal, even though it's not too bad for cover wise. So the other option is diving here. That means the tanks will probably land here, the Orisa and the Roadhog. So you can dive right in the middle and the Anna can probably heal you. And you can drop a projector bubble, protect yourself, right? Uh, there is an option, but generally I also feel like this is a little bit too exposed. I, I do not know what the enemy team has now. What if they have a Reaper and a Roadhog both together standing here? If I die straight into the, the middle of them, I'll probably just die straight away. So it'll probably be another feat. This is why I, you choose, I chose this spot as well. So this spot, generally my Anna can heal me from there. And at the same time, I can poke around the corner and do a little bit of harassment with my Tesla guns. Uh, my lightning gun, it's, it's called a Tesla gun, I think. And I could put a bubble here. So the bubble here, it, will be, it wouldn't last very long. At least it will be annoying to the enemy team. Basically, what I want to do is to cut off this path. I want to cut off this path so that the enemy uh, doesn't dare to walk into here. And I'll win this amount of space for my team as well. Okay, so let's play how see how it turns out. Okay, so in order to jump, I actually walked from the right, from the right room to try and stage, to try and set up my jump there. Uh, obviously, you could jump from here as well. That means starting, you, most most heroes will come from this point, most players, and you can jump directly to there. Not that big of a difference. Personally, I just like to be out of sight when I do a jump so that I take less incoming fire and a little bit more surprising to the enemy team. Okay, so here I saw that the soldier was there. I was considering jumping right in the middle, but I felt that it was a bit too risky. So I was aiming to jump right behind this pillar all along. So I was waiting for like, the enemy to show most of their players. So I see that their main tank has appeared and now I do a jump. Okay, I actually started my jump a little bit before their main tank appeared. Okay, so I landed here and I immediately dropped my bubble trying to win this space for my team. Uh, my Lucio played a little bit too risky, but he manages to survive thanks to the bubble, I think. Okay. The McCree actually flanks for a pretty good angle, almost gets me killed, but because I was standing here, I was able to get heals from my Anna, which kept me alive. So if you look at my cooldown, my jump pack is a six second cooldown, right? So basically I felt like I was, when you feel like you're taking too much enemy fire, that 6 second cooldown gives you a little bit of room to escape. So this is where I can jump out to the next area of cover which is about here or around here because there's this pillar that provides cover to get healed up. So I want to jump back into the defensive position so that my healers can heal me back to full. And meanwhile, even though this space is lost, I've uh, sort of like worn a little bit of space for so that my Roadhog can push in. So my Rohawk makes a good hook, so we get one kill. Okay, so once you see me fully healed, um, I'll be preparing for the next jump. And while I was looking for the next jump, I got hooked by the enemy hawk. But because my jump was still on cooldown, I can easily jump out of the well. Uh, so into the safety of uh, this spot again. And I start to harass, put down my shield and start to harass the enemy DPS. So since I have a monkey tasering them, 
the the McPhee and the soldier has to fall back because uh, they didn't want to go one-on-one -on -one with me with my barrier still up so not that I did not go aggressive on them even though I could have I may have killed the McCree but my priority was just to uh, stay alive and win the space meanwhile my hawk makes another good play because he has a lot of space to work with he's basically uncontested and I jump back for safety sake uh, basically actually I could have stayed here because my barrier was still up I could have done a little bit more damage but uh, the, the idea is that when you, can, you can make use of Winston's cooldowns to do aggressive jump to take uh, aggressive space and then jump back to a defensive space to get healed up so this is how you stay alive as Winston okay we win the point and now Winston would be a good hero to practice if you want to look at win conditions for example uh, among the enemy team, who should we kill to get a big advantage enough to win the fight? So let's say, let's go to Epic Pen again. Okay, so this is the enemy team, this is in blue, right? So the key members that we should want to kill will probably be the DPS, like McCree. That's a big threat. Uh, the Mercy is a little bit hard to kill because she can easily fly away. If she has another teammate that she can guard and injure too. The Soldier is harder to kill as well because Soldier has a uh, sprint ability, so it makes him a bit sneaky and he has his heal pack. Uh, the Anna, it's also a good target, but a little bit hard to kill because she has sleep dart. She can sleep the Winston the instant that uh, they are at point blank range. And also she has a net, she has a nade to keep herself alive as well. But basically if I'm able to jump uh, the McCree, the McCree will be my prime number one target. So this will be target number one. The Anna here will be target number two. Because uh, if I can just drive the Anna out of uh, range, even though I can't kill her, she can't do her job as a healer, she can't provide her utility, and I will have done my job there as well. And probably Soldier and uh, Mercy will be number 3 and 4. Okay, so let's carry on. So I guess I see, I see, the, McCree, I see the McCree on the right side of the screen here. So I think I in communicated in comms that I want, I'm just going to jump the McCree and then I went for it. Okay, so I went for it, went to harass the McCree. Uh, the Pharah I think hurt the McCree behind her. So with the help of the Pharah and me, then you can see the rest of my team all jumps the McCree because I was communicating in comms that uh, jumping McCree, then when I dive for, dive, or diving McCree. So when I dive on the McCree, the attention of my teammates are all put to the enemy McCree and he gets finished off by four members of our team very quickly. So he instantly eliminates the threat. Uh, meanwhile, my Hawk and my Anna are doing work on the left, mainly because we already have a big man advantage. This is why I took an aggressive jump here as well. So I uh, just scouting what they have, backed off. So there was no reason for me to jump further in because that would have been too risky. It would have been out of range of my Anna healing me. So I wanted to stay in line. Uh, around this area, around point, so that my Anna can easily heal me up. Okay, meanwhile I just let my DPS do stuff. And uh, I would like to hide around this corner. Because my idea was that if the enemies turn around this corner, I do not need to waste my jump pack. I could just walk up to them and taser them with my uh, electric gun. So I was just looking through whether they were coming from the left. So I saw that the main tanks were coming from the right. And I appeared myself to zap both of them. And I believe I dropped my bubble as well. Yep, so I dropped my bubble so that their shots don't go through. So I win this amount of space for my team. So the, even though this is a little bit of an aggressive position, um, yep, compared to this, in the end it still works out because my hawk actually managed to make a good hook. And I managed to drive off the enemy tanks. So we win this position, we got a pick. And we win, we have been considered to win the next fight as well. So this is uh, two fights, one straight. So we can keep tracking on the number of fights that we win. Okay, so number of two fights, one. Okay, the enemy still wants to push in with five because five v six is still a is still a reasonable, uh, reasonable thing to do. They can still contest. So I want to stay behind the pillar here, which is my initial spot, and I want to contest. Contest the soldier, just taser him, try and drive him away, drop my bubble, try and win the space. Uh, get a, I got a little bit too aggressive there, got anti-nated, so I, want, I immediately wanted to back off. 
and uh, they are making picks off our Farah, uh, our Hawk dies as well. And I think it was here that my Anna actually nanoed me, which I wasn't expecting because I was already preparing to use my ult to try and survive longer. Yeah, so the moment which I thought I pressed my uh, Q was a split a second earlier than my Anna nanoed me, so it's not enough time for me to stop my ultimate. Basically, as a Winston, if you're working with an Anna, you want to use your the nano in your electric gun form because it does more damage in the electric gun as you do AOE cleave damage. When you primer into a Winston, you're only do, doing, you don't really do that much cleave damage. I think you only do like a single or double hit with uh, your arms compared to like a lightning gun where you can hit like five to six people at the same time. Okay, so I primer, I go, went in, tried to disrupt the enemy team. I was looking for a pick. Here I was trying to boop down the Orisa, which I failed. Yep, so I failed here again. And I overcommitted. I should have backed off here because my health was already 30%. I overcommitted. And you can see how fast I got melted quickly. Okay, so we lost that fight. So we won two, we lost one. Speed this up. Okay, so now in this, uh, we're trying to retake the point again. Uh, basically, the wind condition stays the same. Let's see. Uh, I think it's going to be three. Our wind condition here is that we wanted to dive uh, targets like Macri is our number one dive priority. And if I can see the Anna, she'll be number two. If I can't see any of them, if I don't see any weak targets, at least I want to dive in and take space. Okay, we are at... Okay, instantly my Farah gets picked. But I saw that the McCree was a little bit exposed. I believe I... Yep, I, I died for the McCree. But the McCree really rolled out of that position. Instead, I landed on the Soldier, put on my bubble. So, we got the amount of space. Uh, enemy is reeling because of the Torbjorn. The tank backed off because the Torbjorn altered. Uh, Lucio tried to boot the Orisa in. Missed out. But, well, we were lucky that we got to kill the Mercy. And the Orisa kills our Hawk with a nice pull. But meanwhile, while holding this position, I'm still winning a lot of forward space for my team. The Orisa dies. And I saw opportunity I wanted to dive the Anna. So, um, this is a mechanical mistake from me. I wanted to dive the Anna with a short hop, but instead, my hop threw me too high. Well, and then I think, yeah, I got disorientated and we still managed to kill Anna. And basically, it's now clean up for us. So I looked around, saw the McCree. McCree will be next. And finally, we're only left with the Hawk. But it's a 2v1. So I think I actually got hooked. Yeah, I got hooked, but because my jump pack was on cooldown, I was able to escape. And my Farah did a good boop to kill off enemy Hawk. So we win the third fight. So we flip the point again. So I'm still holding this position behind the pillar. So preparing to get heals, which I got healed by our Anna, who just respawned. And I was thinking that anybody that comes through this bend, I'll just start to taser them. So same thing, I saw the enemy main tank, I start to taser her, engage. I believe I should be... Oh, actually I use Primal here. So you could either put down your bubble here to try and uh, get some defensive space beside the enemy tanks, or in this case I chose to use Primal. Uh, a mistake from me here, because I just mentioned that I shouldn't have gone so deep into the enemy lineup, and I went into the Hawk and the Orisa and the Anna, got slapped and I died. Right. Another mistake was that uh, instead of jumping into the open area like here, where I could have been shot by all six members of the team, I could have chose to either jump to high ground, here or jump to here, this high ground, or just jump beyond the gate here. Uh, if I jump beyond the gate here, I'll probably still die because the Hawk is already on the other side. So probably jumping to a high ground to get a little bit of rest to get a cooldown, a six second cooldown from the jump pack so that we can jump to the next target.
So we lost the fourth fight. Let's speed this up. Let's see if we can win the next one or if the enemy wins the next fight. Okay, so their hawk got out of position and got hooked. Uh, and he got antenated, so we got an early pick on the hawk, which was lucky on us. So at the same time, you'll see me probably diving to the same spot, I think. Oh, but because my team got poked, I wanted to drop a defensive shoe for my healers, for my Anna. And then I went for a jump. So same thing, I went to jump at the pillar. Uh, enemy team uses Deadeye. Lucky that we got a beat to survive through. And my Farah made some kills. But basically, I was, take, I was winning forward space, so the Orisa was uh, focusing on me and not focusing on my Pharah because there's a big monkey in front of her so that's what you want to do as an offensive tank you take space by gaining the enemy's attention so you don't dive exactly right at the enemy but right beside them where there's good cover for you as well but when you're right beside them the enemy's attention is usually focused on you the main enemy the, the main enemy Winston that's zapping them in their face so here I'm just trying my best to be annoying and uh, I was preparing to jump out if my life is in danger. Yep. So that's another way you can do. You can do a horizontal, that means a vertical hop straight upwards. Because when you jump upwards, the enemy's attention is usually uh, diverted. So they can't focus their fire on you. And you get a little bit of rest. Meanwhile, you can wait. You can do that to get your cooldown reset for your bubble as well. So I was lucky that when I jumped up, the Orisa lost track of me. My teammates managed to finish her off and I managed to kill off their mercy. So now we're still holding this space here. So now that we have uh, this much space, if you look around, uh, the whole point around the well now belongs to the red team. And the blue team will find it really difficult to retake this spot because we have control of so much space. And then since they're running down on time, they have to charge straight in. So this is where I chose to be more aggressive. Like I was thinking even if I lose my life here, um, at least I can win a little bit more percentage points and win more time for my team to try and distract them. Yep. And their soldier manages to flank and get on point. But since it's alone and cut off from his tanks, we managed to kill him very quickly. My Hulk is taking forward space. And I dive forward again to try and take space again. Okay, so that's Ilios well. And the next one will be Ilios Ruins as well. Ready for battle. Thank you. Okay, so this time my teammate goes full diva. Uh, because I was communicating in comms well on my dive target. So I think my teammate, even though he's Korean, he can probably understand a little bit of English. And he went diva to try and support me on my dives as well. And the, my all my other teammates... I think it was the Pharah actually went Doomfist, mm, which is a, it ended up to be a pretty good choice here because it's a, it's a good dive hero as well. Okay. So first thing, as the first dive spot, let's say Winston is an offensive tank again, right? We want to take up offensive space. So where do we want to dive to? So in Ruins, we have quite a lot of options. Let me just close my door for a bit. Um, try and get my epic pen working. Okay. Okay. So in ruins, we have quite a few options. Uh, we can dive high ground here, right? We can get high ground here. If the technique is good, we can get high ground here. We can straight away dive into the low ground here. Uh, we can just take space maybe here. We can take the point here. We can dive. CDF. Uh, this FG. We can t take this high ground about the bridge here. Or we can take up this uh, sort of like high ground but not really under cover. Maybe here, hitch. So there are so many options available to us. Technically speaking, um, if I were to think about it more deeply, these options here, the high ground options are okay, but they will leave me a little bit too exposed. And 
let's clear out the options. Okay, and let's just rotate into the spot. So we want to take a note at how our Anna can heal us. So if we, if our Anna is going to be set up either here or here on this high ground, which is usually where Anna's would want to set up. Um, Anna does, does have vision of this high ground, so not too bad. So that is a good die spot, this spot. Anna has decent vision here. And how about this spot? This spot is a little bit covered though. So if we look from here to the Anna, okay, it's not too bad. The Anna can position herself to heal. But uh, if you're looking at the, the ang viewing angles from this spot and this spot, it's a little bit exposed. For example, the whole enemy team can shoot at us here. Uh, there's a chance that we can, we can get slapped, we can get pulled, we can get hooked by the hawk. And same here for this spot as well. It's a little bit too exposed. So these blue spots are a little bit too dangerous for Winston to dive into. <clears throat> This spot is not too bad. That means you can dive into this ledge, uh, put down a bubble, but a little bit exposed as well because the enemy team can easily shoot us from here. So it's a risk that uh, to manage a bubble here, but this is a good off offensive spot, I guess, to dive, but I will personally feel like at this stage, it's a little bit too risky. So other good spots that I feel will be good will be here. Diving here so that we can, I mean, we don't get really good vision. And the bubble usually wouldn't really serve the purpose. So not that great a spot when I think about it more. Um, this spot I feel is not too bad, but it doesn't give high ground. Like uh, this spot is, un is covered from uh, the enemy team. So the enemy team can't shoot at me from here and I can get healing from my Anna. And another spot will be here as well. I pull a bubble here, my Anna can heal me. And I can easily rotate the height here. So multiple, multiple options. No right or wrong answer, but uh, it's just a risk versus reward. So just analyze that which positions that you feel will put you more at risk versus the amount of space that you're going to get. Okay, so let's see. I think I chose the spot in the low ground. Oh, I think I was actually hooked. So I actually didn't get a choice. Okay, yeah, my diva goes too forward. So you can see that my diva picked one of the spots that I mentioned. But uh, you will see that the D.Va gets melted almost instantly. Uh, even though the D.Va had a D-Matrix, she was instantly forced back and low health. So I was actually forced to use Bubble at that spot to try and cover for my D.Va. So I didn't have a choice of uh, which dive spot to pick. But my Doomfist went in. And I wanted to follow up with my Doomfist to dive on the enemy Orisa. Yep. So you see me taking this spot behind the walls here. And uh, my diva went too forward, to expose, and she gets demacked, I think. Yep. Uh, okay. So she was lucky that she didn't get demacked there, because she got some healing from the Anna. Yep, and she got a nade as well. And instantly I spotted these two hit scan DPSs on the high ground. So they were good dive targets. As I mentioned earlier, McCree is always my number one priority. Uh, next will be... But in this case, since they are now picking Ash instead of Soldier, uh, Ash has even less mobility than McCree because at least McCree has a flashbang. You can flash and roll away. While Ash only has a coach gun to try and push me away for a, sh a little bit of distance. So both Ash and McCree are like number one dive priorities. And second will probably be the Anna on the blue team. So I saw my juicy dive priorities and I wanted to dive straight for them. But I missed my jump and landed behind them instead. Ideally, I wanted to land on the bridge, but I missed my jump. So it's a mechanical mistake for me. But uh, they are, somehow their Ash went to low ground and we were able to get quite a lot of good damage on the enemy DPSs there. So we managed to kill the Ash. I wanted to go for the Mercy and uh, uh, almost get some Mercy but because she can have Guardian Angel, it's quite difficult to get the Mercy. Then I went in front of uh, the McPhee and you can see me taking up a space here. So I went to do a vertical jump up. Uh, to try and get my cooldown, get to land and to land my bubble. And meanwhile, my team is actually wiping out my point. So from if you aim from this perspective, my team has uh, so much space, but uh, it's quite a messy fight because somehow they actually did manage to kill our... I think they managed to kill our uh, Torbjorn 
and my the image kill our Torbjorn and our uh, Brick. So the only healer left was was Anna even alive though? The blue team Anna is here. I think our Anna died as well. No. Yeah, so they managed to kill all our healers. So it's quite a messy fight. And I had to back off. So I backed off, I jumped back to a safe position. Try and put pressure again. Uh, I believe my bubble was still on cooldown. Well, I was lucky that I didn't get killed. Then now I'm taking up this defensive, so-called this space here. Like I mentioned behind a wall where other enemies can't shoot me and I put down my bubble. Okay, so within that bubble you can see that my Doomfist stays safe, my Brick stays somewhat safe and we are able to dominate the enemies that are inside that bubble space. Yep, so both the um, Mercy and the Orisa dies, she, even though they manage to so-called rest the Anna, the Anna should die soon as well. She lands a good anti -nate. She lands a good anti I can hook and kill by the hawk, which was unlucky. That was something that I probably couldn't have never avoided. But we managed to wipe up the cleanup and win that first uh, critical first fight. Okay, the diva bomb. She spent it to remake. I guess it's a little bit of a waste. But in cough maps, the first point is always the most important fight because uh, the team that wins first always gets a big percentage advantage as well as an ultimate advantage. Okay, as you can see that from uh, we are on the red team. So we already have a uh, three ultimate advantage and if our diva did not use the bomb, uh, okay, our Torbjorn almost has an hour as well. So it's a four ultimate, four to two ultimate advantage. And if the diva didn't use the bomb, we will almost got six outs just from winning that first fight. Because uh, I'm actually close to a primer as well. So you can see that on Kof maps, uh, winning the first fight is so important because it just gives the team both percentage gain earlier percentage gain which is an advantage and also ultimate percent uh, more ultimate skin which is another advantage so you can have a very big snowball effect as long as you win the cough the cough maps first fight okay so my diva gets hooked and she gets demacked um i believe i remember in comps i was calling for the team to be defensive because we were one man down but my doom face went yolo and just went ahead yeah i think my doom face probably wasn't in comps or or something. So he went YOLO, he went for the he went for uh the enemy Anna where there was a McQueen and an Ash right beside her, so and uh yeah I didn't predict the Doomfist would go in. If he did, I would have uh, wanted to dive along with the Doomfist to try and uh let him survive and try to like at least maybe pick one or two. But instead I wasn't looking at Doomfist and I went to jump to try and support my break. Because I think my break just sparked the inspire. Somehow they wanted to take the fight 5 on 6. So I had no choice. Try to spot my break. And my Doomfist dies, but it was lucky that I got a kill on the enemy Anna. So trying to win this space here with a bubble. So same thing, this ramp is kind of a key space. Uh, normally I wouldn't have wanted to take this spot, but there was no choice. I wanted to keep my break alive. Okay. And I was diving because I think we got the yeah, so we got the enemy Orisa, got the enemy main tank. This is why I made a little bit too aggressive dive, but I wanted to get to try and at least harass the the McQueen as well as the Ash out of position. I wanted to get out. Oh, lucky that they missed his flashbang. Oh, okay, because I have primal. So as well I was a little bit more confident. So when you have primal you can be a little bit more aggressive on the attack. Yep. So the reason that I went so aggressively for both, both the McQueen and the Ash was because I got Primal, which is essentially a second life. And I tried to go for the McQueen, but he kept getting killed from the Mercy, so I couldn't kill him. I didn't know, I don't know whether I survived here. Because I was getting not too low. Yep. Okay. But once my Primal ran out, I actually jumped to safety. So I jumped back to point to get healed up. And... So to say we have won the second fight. So we won two fights in a row, that's why we are now 50% up. My Doomfist goes YOLO, goes Ham with his ultimate, gets a pick. And that was an advantage for us. So that was when uh, I caught the dive. I think I caught the dive the Anna. So I went for the Anna, dived in deep. We managed to get a kill, I think. Yeah, 
kill and then next will be focus trying to focus down the McCree, but McCree may should run away. Yep, so the Rhine was just in front of us, so we focused down on the Rhine. Got a 3v1. And I see the Orisa taking space here, so I want to, to dive that spot to try and take the space away from the Orisa. But once we enter into this area, you can see that this area is not so good for the attacking team. Uh, they now have a Reaper, they have a McCree. And uh, since we only barely managed to kill the Orisa and our bubble was down, I called for the team to back off. And I backed off that. So the whole team, I called for the team to back off. In comms, everyone backed off. Uh, yeah. And our Anna actually was the one with the least mobility, so our Anna died. And I made a bad jump here, and a fat as well. Jumped off the map. Which was bad, and another mechanical mistake from me. Okay. So this means that technically our team is... Probably gonna lose the third fight because there was first two fights won. Uh, okay, the third fight actually happened off the point, so we won the third that third fight, which was happening here. So this is another thing about aggressive space uh, when you can take the fight into the enemy's territory. You should do it as a dive, Winston, so that you can win more space and delay the enemy team from taking the point. So we won the third fight in the enemy's territory, and uh, we're probably gonna lose this fourth fight because we're already down two. Okay, that was a good bomb, and our Torbjörn managed to pick the enemy support, and we managed to pick the Mercy, the Diva carried here, here managed to pick the Orisa. So somehow we're gonna win the 4 fight straight. And now I'm back, so we dive the Reaper, deny him space, and that's it. So that's uh, 4 consecutive fights won. So if 4 fights win as a dive tank, it's 100% uh, to 0. And we win the map. Victory. Okay, so in general, maybe I'll try and summarize this, or like uh, replay review. Maybe we can just zoom it to part whereby there's no enemies on screen. A little bit more. Okay, let's see it. So in general, I think uh, when you want to take space as Winston, one of the priorities you want to take is uh, places that have cover. So you can see me continuously taking spots like this because there is cover from the enemy, uh, enemy's fire. The enemy can't, don't have line of sight to ac or access to me. So any hit scan or any other enemies, they can't really shoot me from here. But yet you have line of sight to your own healers so that your own healers can support you. And you just want to deny, you want to take up this space with your bubble as well as your presence here around the corners to deny the enemy from coming down the ramp. So you can, this, this kind of space is generally pretty good. So other more aggressive spaces you can take is you can take high ground. For example, you can take here. So you can try and take here and try and put a bubble, but make sure that you have, uh, your healers have line of sight to you, such as your Anna or your Mercy, so that they can heal you up. And you can try and just taser and push enemies back. But obviously such high ground positions are a little bit more tricky because uh, you can see from the view here that you're very exposed to any hit scan heroes or even projectile heroes have a uh, line of sight to you. So it's a lot more, it's a lot easier to die as Winston if you're in such exposed areas. Okay, so hope that, um, so I'll like illustrates a little bit of uh, how to take space as a Winston in the lower SR level, such as maybe go and below, or maybe even you can use this in plat as well. Because uh, there really isn't many decent Winston players, I believe. Uh, because Winston is such a easy hero to die on. A lot of players actually they think that Winston is supposed to dive the back line. They have the misimpression that Winston should dive back line, and they just dive like super deep into right into the middle of the enemy team, use their bubble, and they find that they die within two to three seconds because all six of the enemy team can just turn their attention to the Winston and focus him down. At the same time, this is our line of sight of their healers, so that Anna can't heal them, can't need them. Um, and other healers, maybe like Lucio, doesn't really provide that much healing. And the brick is not as fast as to follow up on the diving Winston and so on. Even the Moira isn't as fast. She can fit in, but if the Moira fits in to try and heal the Winston, she will likely feed along the Winston. So this is uh, why taking space as Winston and taking more like certain space that has a uh, cover from the enemy line of sight uh, 
but as long as side to your own healers is very important. Mm, okay, I think that's all I want to say for this video. So I hope it helps somebody out and uh, have a good day.